night. Also, meanwhile, there is new evidence that the Obama White House ignored multiple warnings about the financial viability of Solyndra. Now, the evidence comes in the form of emails handed over to congressional investigators, and the documents clearly show White House officials dismissing a report in July of 2010 criticizing Solyndra's finances. Now, Obama aide Greg Nelson responded to the analysis by declaring, quote, seems B.S., as usual, this administration wasn't interested in protecting your money. They were interested in protecting the president's job. The AP quotes an email from an Obama aide that warned, quote, the optics of a Solyndra default will be bad. The timing will likely coincide with the 2012 campaign season heating up. And to be honest, the author of that email is right, because the White House staked its entire green jobs agenda on this company. And it all began way back in 2009 at the groundbreaking of a now vacant solar plant. Part of our plan is to make sure that as we create these jobs, we create jobs of the future, like the ones you're creating. Jobs you can raise a family on, green jobs, jobs that will serve as a foundation for a stronger American economy, which is why it's so important we, we, we invest in Solyndra. And I'm really happy, along with the secretary, to announce today that we've closed a $535 million loan guarantee for Solyndra, more than half a billion dollars. Now, that half billion dollars is gone, as are the 1,100 jobs that were at that site. And sadly, we're learning that Solyndra is only the tip of the very big iceberg because there are at least four other companies who received millions in stimulus funds that have since filed for bankruptcy. Joining me now with analysis of this growing firestorm is Fox News contributor, columnist, the one and only, our friend Charles Krauthammer. Charles, welcome back, sir. Pleasure to be with you, Sean. All right, well, you know, what are we to make of this? They got every warning imaginable not to do this. All the emails, they even predicted the date that this, this company would go bankrupt, uh, but they forced it through anyway. What are we to make of this? This is a classic example of this toxic combination of lemon socialism and crony capitalism. The lemon socialism part is the old story of industrial policy, meaning smart people in Washington, or people who think they're smart, elected officials, the bureaucrats, and they bring in experts who think they're even smarter, decide which are the industries of the future, as if they know and the market doesn't. So you pick industries that you think, companies that you think will do well, with none of the knowledge of the market. We have a hundred years of experience that tells us that the impersonal knowledge spread out in the market always is superior in the long run to any choice, especially by non-economist politicians. That's why, and the most extreme example, of course, are the socialist states. So the Union, Cuba, North Korea, you destroy an economy when you think that a politician in a centralized capital knows where capital ought to be allocated. The other element of this is the, the, the corruption. That is the crony capitalism. It's not randomly thrown around money. It always seems to be money thrown, as in the Solyndra case, into a company that just happens to be invested in heavily by a George Kaiser, who's a big donor to Obama. It's always like this. It's a corruption of the process. In principle, it won't work because it's a socialist idea of experts over the, the markets. But it's, it's made even worse when it involves cronyism and favors and corruption. I, I, I think what you're saying is you, you're not really buying the definition of crony capitalism as much as you're saying this is, you know, this is cronyism here. This is, um, you know, we have this friend of Obama's. The week before they get this, this half a billion dollars, 535 million stimulus taxpayer dollars, that they had access to the White House, access that for all intent and purposes, for my analysis, was bought because they bundled this money and gave all this money to the Obama campaign. Is that a fair analysis? Is there any other way to interpret that? Well, let's just say that we don't have evidence yet that can hang anybody, but there's a lot of circumstantial evidence. You're right. This is the first loan. It is also an immense loan, half a billion dollars, to one company. And it is to somebody who's a, who gave a lot of money to the president. The worst part about this is that there were Energy Department officials on the board uh, in the late months, in 2011, when it was headed downhill. And they were there aware of the condition of the company and apparently did nothing. And all that money. But there was a change in the loan arrangements late in the game. The Energy Department, which was originally supposed to be first in line 
to collect in case of a liquidation and a bankruptcy ended up last in line and that's why you and our you and I as people who pay taxes are going to be wiped out in this are going to lose the entire half a billion dollars yeah I mean it's pretty outrageous they also got a special loan rate which uh, I think has been right. overlooked by a pretty significant portion of the media uh, and there are other companies as well and it's a similar story so there's a pattern of behavior here that people that bundled money were able to buy access and then as a result of the access they get you know basically taxpayer money and these companies go under uh, but the larger issue to me is that even if it weren't a corrupt deal even if it were above board what is the government doing throwing thirty billion dollars at an industry that is now a fantasy we hear biden say job of the future how does he know you know it's like yeah. throwing billions of dollars at jet engines in the nineteen twenties if it comes the market will tell us the market says these companies are worthless. This is a company that was making a solar panel at six dollars and selling it at three. And I'm not an economist, but I'm not sure that that actually <laughs> works in the long run or the short run. I don't think you need to be an economist. Uh, my, my ten year old daughter, she just turned ten. I think she can figure out the math on that, uh, Charles. Uh, it's fairly simple. But, you know, the, the old Jewish joke of the, the two tailors, Max and Sam, one says, how you doing? He says, well, I'm, I'm, I'm making shirts at a dollar each and I'm selling them at 50 cents. And the other asks, well, how do you make a living? He says, I make it up on volume. <laughs> well, apparently it didn't work uh, in this Apparently that's the, the arithmetic.